Hi everybody, um, we're up in, the, in Malagasy in the lemur enclosure today, just giving out some fruit. We got a really great donation of melon recently, um, so all the animals have been enjoying it. So we're just giving a scatter feed out to the lemurs at the moment. Um, up here at Malagasy we've got 11 ring-tailed lemurs, we've got two girls and we've got nine boys. Um, it's really nice at the minute, so obviously we are missing the public, we're missing you guys. Um, but actually it's been quite beneficial for Kaya because she gets a little bit more time outside. So um, when we're open, Malagasy um, is open for a few hours a day. And during that time, Kaya actually has to go back into the big enclosure in the middle of the part of the middle of, of the enclosure. And that's just because she doesn't get on so well with the public. Um, she's more than happy to go in there, but actually while we've been closed, it means she has access outside all of the time, which has been, been nice for her. Uh, every now and again, maybe once a week, we'll still bring her inside so she doesn't lose the routine of coming back in. Uh, but she's pretty happy to be out and about, but she's also pretty happy when she goes in because we give her extra treats and enrichment and things. So we make it fun for her in there. And also she's never on her own when we do have to put her um, into the enclosure. She's always got a company and a, and a buddy in there with her. So Kaya was uh, kept as a pet for the first 18 months of her life um, by a family in Ireland. Um, now they weren't mean to her, but it's, she's a really good example of why primates don't make good pets. Um, so they kept her in their house. They fed her what they thought they should, she should eat. They didn't abuse her in any way. But as soon as she hit 18 months old, which is when ring lemurs become sexually mature, she just did exactly what all female ring lemurs would do. Um, and they're dominant in their troops, the females. So she wanted to be the dominant animal. Um, that's not her fault. That's perfectly natural. It's just that she was in the wrong environment to show that. So at the minute, well, for all of her life probably, she thinks that we're one big treat. So she either thinks that we're humans or she either thinks that we're lemurs or she's a human, but whichever way around, she thinks she needs to be in charge of us all. So she does show some quite um, domineering behaviours towards people, which is why she can't be out with the public. So yeah, this tire is just down here. It's quite easy to tell because her left ear flops over to one side, just down on the ground. Um, a lot of people come into Malagasy and go, they all look exactly the same. How do you ever tell them apart? But once you've worked with them for a little while, they're actually quite easy to tell apart and they've all got some distinguishing feature. So like I said, Kaya um, has got that floppy left ear. She's also got a bit of a belly on her. She's a little bit of a chubster. Again, the dominant females get the majority of or whatever food they want. They get to take food off the boys if they want it. So our girls are a little bit uh, chubbier than the boys. Uh, so that's Kaya. And then Fennel is just the other side of the M. She's our dominant female. She was born here at the park in 2001. So Fennel, um, again because she's a bit chubby, actually has some fat pouches on her hips. So we, can't, we call them her love handles. <laughs> <laughs> and some people say she's got a bit of a squashed up face as well, but mainly the hips I think give it away. Um, so this is Indiana. Uh, he's one of our sets of twins here. So we've got um, Indiana and Sirius. Sirius is just over, over there at the minute. Um, and they were a set of twins that were born here. They do look very similar. When any new primate care staff start here at the park, it's probably the two sets of twins that are the hardest to ID. Um, but Indiana has a tapered tail. So instead of being a nice fluffy end of his tail, like some of the others, kind of tapers to a bit more of a point. So we can tell him easily apart. Uh, this fella here, you're gonna turn around. Penta. Penta. <laughs> so he's gonna go over there. So that's the one that everyone can ID probably on first glance. So you can see he's missing his left ear tip. Um, he's also got quite a bit of excess skin on his chest area. That's Renton. So Renton is one of Fennel's very best friends. So he's, uh, although he's never really been the dominant male recently, he was a very long time ago, but um, he's best friends with the dominant female. So he does get quite a good, a good position. Good girl. Go on next. What else have we got about? So next to Fennel we've got Al. Again, he's quite easy to tell because he has the crooked tail. So he has a historic break from before he was rescued. He was kept in the British pet trade, unfortunately, um, but not treated nicely, unlike Kaya. Um, he was um, unfortunately living in a garden shed. So he was part of a, a police and RSPCA confiscation. The, the police went to do a drugs raid. The RSPCA went because they were told there were some animals there. Um, when they got there, they found three school monkeys in the kitchen and a pig tail macaque 
in a cage outside. Um, the guy went to prison, they'd also found bugs there. Um, the school monkeys came here, it's Lucille, Lopez and Logan, they live here. And the pig town with cat went to a different, uh, different sanctuary. And then about a week later, the guy in prison admitted to having lemurs at his property as well. So the RSPCA went back. Um, there were two, but unfortunately Al was the only survivor. So in the time where there'd been no one caring for them, um, Al's mate had died, unfortunately. And it's just unnecessary, it's unnecessary suffering. They're not pets, these guys. Um, they shouldn't be kept in that kind of environment. But he's, a, he's a pretty chilled out boy. So he is the most recent arrival. He has been here a few years now. So he's the lowest in the hierarchy. <laughs> Who else have we got? Oh, so they're little twins. These are our youngest boys. This is Friedrich and this is Kurt. So again, these are a set of twins. They are quite difficult to ID. So because I knew the group and then these two arrived, I only actually learned to learn two. So it's not that difficult. But um, between the two of them, uh, Friedrich's got more orange eyes, whereas Kurt's got paler, paler orange eyes. Um, and I think Kurt's got a slightly pointier face, whereas Friedrich's a bit more squishy looking. Um, and behaviourally, Kurt's the cleverer one out of the two. So um, when they joined the troop, it took quite a while to get the two into the troop. Um, but Kurt's a bit more savvy. Um, <laughs> um, so lemurs are known as, as prosimians, that's the family they're under. So they're the same as like bush babies and loris. Um, and that just means that they're slightly less involved, evolved than the monkey and ape species. Um, but that set of uh, animals do have some specific um, differences. So lemurs have what's called a tooth comb. So the teeth in, down here, the lower teeth at the front, actually kind of lie almost flat. Um, and they're really close and packed together. <laughs> Kaya. Um, and that's just to aid grooming. So it's a really good uh, uh, grooming tool. And unlike some of the, unlike the other monkeys in the ape species, the lemurs actually use their sense of smell more than their eyesight and their hearing. So you can kind of tell that that would be apparent they've got a longer snout and they've got a wet nose like a cat or a dog. So you can kind of, that indicates that their sense of smell is more important. They scent mark a lot um, and they smell a lot. So they have scent glands on each wrist. You can see maybe, or you can quite see it on the if you come mm -hmm. around, you'll see a little black mark on his wrist. Mm -hmm. One of his scent glands. Um, and they have scent glands around their armpits and also around their bum as well. So they scent mark everywhere um, to claim their territory, but they also do a really cool piece of behaviour called stink fighting. Um, and it's basically, they use it for two ways. So the boys will do it to each other to show who's stronger and who's more dominant. And then the boys will do it to the girls to tell them that they fancy them and how impressive they are. So for, when a lemur stink fights, they'll put their tail between the scent glands on their wrist and they stink it all up with their wrist. And then they put their tail over their head and then they'll flick it at their opponent and you just see them um, scenting away at each other and then the, the stinkier one wins and the less stinky one is submissive and runs away and they make like a little cackling noise that's a submissive noise um, and that'll show that they're being submissive and they'll run away so we would see it or people will see it at breeding season a lot so um, it's really important for the dominant male to know who's dominant male at that point because he would get to make more of the females so if we bred them here at the park at that season you would see lots of stink fighting while the boys are trying to sort their hierarchy out we don't breed the lemurs here at the park, so we don't have that period. So whenever we actually bring new animals in, that's when we see it more. Because whenever you bring a new lemur in, again, they have to sort out their place in the hierarchy. So we would see that kind of behaviour so they can figure it out. So that noise, if you heard it, the cackly noise, that's the submissive noise. And that was Fennel chasing away Friedrich. I don't know why she was chasing him. Maybe she saw a bit of melon if she wanted. But like I said, the females are dominant over all boys. So, chase him away.